Welcome to Uniform History. If you haven't seen the last video covering the U.S. Army's attempt at a universal camouflage and the creation of UCP, click the link here to get caught up. Otherwise, let's jump right in with Multicam and its U.S. Army's offshoots. If you remember from the last video, the U.S. Army began experimenting with the universal camouflage back in 2002. As part of that testing, a defense contractor by the name of Cry Precision submitted a pattern simply called the Contractor Developed Mod. It made it to the final four but was ultimately passed over for UCP. Well, that pattern, also referred to as Scorpion, was slightly altered and went on to be licensed by Cry Precision under the name Multicam, which was then made available to the public. While the U.S. Army was running around with UCP, Multicam, both licensed and otherwise, along with variations of it, quickly became a popular camouflage used by various militaries and federal forces around the world. The list is a bit long, so I won't go into too much detail, but three major instances of its usage are the British military adopting MTP, or multi-terrain pattern, which takes DPM and multicam and more or less mixes the two together. Australia's AMCU, or Australian Multicam Camouflage Pattern, which again takes its older pattern and mixes it with multicams. And Poland's newest camouflage pattern family, Suez, which is a slightly altered version of multicam. Don't worry, at some point in the future I will cover these patterns in greater detail. But back to Cry's multicam and the US military. It's worth noting the US Navy's EOD Units of the Air Force and Special Operations Command also used multicam while UCP was the standard issue. So how did the Army go from dismissing this pattern to making it one of its officially issued ones within 10 years? Well, as mentioned in the UCP video, soldiers began to complain about the pattern in the ACU-style uniform. So from 2007 to 2008, Natick Labs once again began testing on various patterns. These tests were known simply as Phase 2, Phase 1 being the initial tests back in 2002. The result? The idea of a universal pattern was inconceivable, and region-specific patterns were the way to go. Seeing this, the House of Representatives passed Bill 2346, which required the Army to start issuing soldiers camouflage uniforms that would work in Afghanistan. After a 2009 study, known as Phase 3, in which Multicam went up against UCPD, a temporary fix was found, and the Army licensed Cry Precision for new Multicam uniforms under the name OEFCP or Operation Enduring Freedom Camouflage Pattern, also referred to as Multicam OCP. The OEFCP uniforms kept the ACU style cut, changing only minor things such as altering the location of IR tabs on the sleeve pockets and replacing Velcro closures for the cargo pockets on the pants with button ones. In early 2010, Phase 4, officially called the Camouflage Improvement Effort, began. Instead of the experiments done by Natick Labs in 2002, this was a competition where various companies and suppliers entered their patterns for consideration. The goal of this improvement effort was to find a new permanent camouflage family for troops operating not only in Afghanistan, but all over the world. This round of testing called for three patterns to cover woodland environments, desert environments, and transitional environments. The U.S. Army did have a submission for these testings. The three patterns were AOR2, or Area of Responsibility 2, for woodland environments, which would later become the Navy's standard camouflage pattern, all over brush for desert environments, which, if you remember, was the overall winner of the 2002 NATEC trials, and finally Cry's Multicam for transitional environments. Of the 22 initial submissions, three ultimately went on to the final stage. They were from Cry Precision with their already issued Multicam. Reports said the traditional Multicam was to be altered to meet the three environmental requirements. Cryptech with their Mandrake pattern for woodland, Nomad pattern for desert, and Highlander pattern for transitional. Brookwood companies with their three covert patterns, and ADS Inc. as Prime, which was partnered with Guy Kramer with its three U.S. Forces patterns. Cry and Multicam were the clear-cut winners. However, after a bit of negotiating, the Army refused the licensing fees Cry Precision had proposed for Multicam. In a statement, though, from Cry, they said the fee would have added only 1% to the overall cost of production. Regardless, talks broke down in late 2013. The second nail, and the largest one, was the 2014 Defense Authorization Act. This act generally prevented any branch of the military from creating a new camouflage or utility uniform and only limited them to ones already in use or previously used. 
This act pretty much came about because many had felt the various military branches had made their search for new camouflage more of a fashion statement rather than a practical one. And with price tags in the billions, lawmakers and other government officials decided that a single camouflage pattern would once again be worn by all branches at some point in the future. So what did the Army do with all these limitations? Well, they simply went back to the original Natek Trials Scorpion pattern and did some modifications, and Scorpion W-2 was born. Not long after, it would be officially called OCP, or Operational Camouflage Pattern, though it's also worth noting it's been referred to as Scorpion OCP. Now, the lingo and terminology of these two uniforms can sometimes get kind of murky. I've seen numerous instances of people refer to the OEFCP Multicam as Multicam OCP and the new OCP as Scorpion OCP. Either way, here's a breakdown on how to tell the differences between the two. This is a side-by-side -side comparison of OEFCP, aka Multicam OCP, and Scorpion W2 OCP, or just OCP. You can see there are some differences in the shapes, the main one being the lack of vertical elements in the Scorpion pattern. As for the colors, there are quite a few differences. Multicam is made up of seven, which are Cream 524, Tan 525, Pale Green 526, Olive 527, Dark Green 528, Brown 529, and Dark Brown 530. Scorpion W2, on the other hand, consists of Tan 525, Olive 527, Dark Green 528, Brown 529, Dark Cream 559, Light Sage 560, and Bark Brown 561. Additionally, you can tell the difference by the cut of the uniform. The new OCP uniforms have a few major differences, which are the removal of the Mandarin-style collar, sleeve pockets which are about an inch longer and closed via a side zipper instead of Velcro, and the removal of the waist string and all Velcro on the pants. Now, the difference between Multicam and Scorpion W2, once you notice, is pretty obvious, but what's the difference between the original Scorpion from the early 2000s and the new W2 version? Well, take a look here. The uniform on the left is the early Scorpion pattern, on the right, the new W2. Generally, it looked like the Army adjusted the sizing of the pattern by a bit, in addition to altering the colors. On July 31st, 2014, the U.S. Army announced the new uniforms would start becoming available to deployed troops immediately, and all others starting on July 1st, 2015. Scorpion W-2 was officially patented on July 7th, 2015. It's important to bring up, though, that in the patent itself, there is a table that showcases the effectiveness of a number of different camouflages. UCP, Multicam, and Scorpion W-2 are among these. You can see the average numbers show that the new Scorpion pattern is actually less effective than Cry's Multicam. Finally, the Army went on to say that two additional variants would also roll out in the near future. A darker one for woodland and jungle terrains, and a lighter one for desert and arid terrains. Apparently, these two variants were created during the testing, but have not been officially picked up. Not much else has been reported on them as of this video's creation. Thus completes the massive snafu that was the U.S. Army's experiment with UCP and the ultimate creation of OCP. Be sure to subscribe or check back for our next video covering the U.S. Air Force's Digital Tiger Stripe and ABU uniform.